you know, if you watch uh, any Christian television at all, they talk about this topic all the time. If you come to Abundant Life, you know me. Very rarely do I, I talk uh, entirely uh, in a whole sermon about money. But today we're going to be talking about money. Now, it used to be way back in the day when we would take up the offering, people would actually clap. I mean, that was like the thing. Anybody remember that? There's a few people, yeah, we're going to receive an offering. People will be clapping. Why? Because we're giving to God that which he's entrusted to us. It's just trusting him with the best that we have, and, and uh, he's given it to us. So anyway, we're going to be talking about money today, and we're going to be talking about missions. And I want to introduce you to some very important people this morning. Um, and on the slides here, I have some pictures. This first one is Matt and Debbie Mann. I don't know how many remember Matt and Debbie. Matt and Debbie Mann, a great couple. They're right now, they're in Africa, they're in the Congo, and uh, they were in Botswana, and some things changed there, and now they're in the Congo, and they're serving God there. Hopefully, we'll get to see them next year as they itinerate and be back here with us and share to us what's going on. Um, this, this young guy, Matt, is just a great lover of souls, and, and our efforts there and putting him there. Now, we're part of a, a cooperative of more than 340 churches. So churches like ours that are under 200 people, when we give, when you give to missions, we are part of that. So, you know, we couldn't support these guys on our own, but because we're part of that missions uh, focus of the Northwest Ministry Network, we have the opportunity to be in share and partnership with them. So let's look at some more of these people. Here we have uh, John and Evelyn Shane, very dear friends of ours. They were our pastor when we were... Um, coming out of um, in college days there in between being a youth pastor and coming to Abundant Life. He was a pastor at Enumclaw Church, and, and he is, uh, as you've heard him share here, he, he's got a tremendous ministry to the orphans in Russia. Uh, how many remember years ago when we had the Russian orphan choir here that he brought over? And, and that was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, it was, we didn't care how well they sang. Every There was not a dry eye in this place as we saw these little orphans uh, up here singing these songs about Jesus all because of the outreach of this guy in the and also in Sri Lanka so um, some more slides here Mark Barcliffe just shared with us a couple years ago this guy was an MMA fighter a uh, good strong guy and he, he uh, loves the Lord and he has developed some uh, incredibly uh, awesome ways to uh, get um, uh, the gospel into places uh, like North North Korea and things like that um, through the internet in ways that he can't really talk about too much. In fact, when he comes and talks with us, we have to turn the video camera off because he can't share about the people and connections that he is with overseas. So pretty awesome ministry. Some more? we got a lot of more. Joe and Rachel Erickson, Teen Challenge International in Brussels, uh, or right here in America. Let's go on. Let's show some more. Uh, Jeff and Pam Gregory, you know these folks. They've been here a few times. Uh, 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 Jeff has a, that thick English accent, being from England, and, and comes and uh, shares with us. But they're, they have a unique ministry uh, based in the Philippines where they are broadcasting uh, Christian shows into the 1040 window, which is a closed area of China, North Korea, and places like that. The no other way can the gospel get in. And they've developed some movies lately that are being shown in theaters in these countries that you would never be able to get into any other way. So pretty awesome some stuff. Uh, Mike and Cheryl Langford, you know, Mike used to pastor this church years ago. You know, well, uh, Eric, uh, Cheryl's brother and brother, um, who used to serve here as associate pastor, and um, they're just a great couple in the Philippines doing their work, training missionaries to Muslims. Can you imagine that? And, and they're having a tremendous impact. Their school grows every year. Uh, let's, see, let's see, we got more. We got a lot of more. Uh, Mexico City, Deaf Children's Ministries, we got more. Look at what we got. We got Daryl. Oh, I think they retired, actually. They came off the field. We uh, uh, Let's go on to the next one. This last year, Bill and Sonia Shaw. Now, Bill's been here a few times. Uh, They're also there in the Congo. Now, Bill is in charge and uh, is one of the professors at a Bible school there that they, these young pastors come in. They don't have any money, and, and he, they train them, they house them, they feed them, and they send them back out. And they're planting churches all over the place, crazy, awesome stuff. Uh, Je John and Beth Wilson, now rushing now. This, these guys have taken um, what's become... Um, 
not so popular in America anymore, which unfortunately is the Royal Ranger program. And he has taken the Royal Ranger program, translated it into Russian, and they're 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 using by they're reaching young boys for Christ by having the Royal Ranger program in these Russian churches. And the pro and the the ministry has just really grown. Now, uh, you'll if you hear any of the guys that went to um, El Salvador that went on the El Salvador short term mission trip from our church. Uh, this last time, if you ever heard Mark uh, Schaffler speak, you know what it's like in Europe. It's a tough place. It can be difficult, and Russia is the same way. Um, uh, some of the places more open to the gospel are more like the Ukraine, but Russia itself is very close to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and you go to the South America, you could have a uh, rally, you could have 10,000 people show up for a whole week and have thousands saved, or you could go to the Europe and have five people show up and have one person saved the whole time you're there. It's just a tougher ground, but he's doing the Tremendous work there. Um, Teen Challenge, Women's Center, Bob and Carol. Now, Bob and Carolyn retired this last year. They have a new leader of the center at Teen Challenge in Graham, and I have not met them yet. Um, but I got to tell you, this ministry uh, we're going to see here next week. Don't miss. Bring a friend. You're going to see a whole row of men. We're going to have the Men's Center from Seattle this time up here standing and sharing their stories about being addicted to drugs and alcohol, in and out of prison. Uh, these guys were users and dealers, and they were arrested. They were uh, Some of them have had some of the darkest, ugliest past you can imagine. They're going to be sharing how that they found Christ and the hope of Christ has changed their life. And you will not want to miss that. I mean, these guys are going to look the part. They're going to sound the part. Bring a friend that doesn't know Jesus they're going to want to you're going to want them to be here next Sunday awesome privilege for us to have them and of course all the stuff that CareNet Puget Sound we support local ministries right here like Teen Challenge and CareNet CareNet a, a woman can go in a young woman or girl that, that believes she's pregnant and she can have an ultrasound in color now to see her baby in her womb they have these awesome things that uh uh, programs for them that can help them if they decide to keep it. And over 95% of the women that go to this as an alternative to Planned Parenthood can decide to keep the baby. And to this ministry, CareNet, a Puget Sound that we support, will help them through the whole process. Anything from uh, housing, uh, temporary housing and education to uh, adoption services, CareNet, Puget Sound is a tremendous ministry and we support them. Uh, also, Speed the Light, the youth, the young people raise money every year. I don't know how much they raised this last year. Um, do you know Ada off the top of your head? I don't know, more than $700, I think, some more over 1000 usually. But they Speed the Light, uh, they provide uh, equipment and vehicles for missionaries overseas. Uh, so oftentimes when you hear our missionaries come and share, they'll say, yeah, and I drove my Speed the Light vehicle into the, a place where they couldn't normally go. And, and so uh, the young people usually raise the funds for this in BGMC, the Boys and Girls Missionary Crusade. You saw that last week that they met their goal. And uh, I told Amy she needed to dye her hair blonde or something for them. She wouldn't do it. Uh, she wouldn't do it. Maybe you could convince her. We could convince her to do that. I think that'd be awesome. I think she'd look good as a blonde. Anyway, and of course, the Abundant Life Benevolence Ministry. When you give in the offering, any regular ties and offering, a percentage of that goes to helping somebody that just calls up the church at random. Hey, I need some help with food. Okay, come on over. Let's see if we can hook you up with some money for food uh, and stuff like that. So Abundant Life is active in the community. It's active abroad. It's, it's, these are the ones that r are right now on our mission support docket. And when you give to missions outside of your regular giving on a little envelope, it says missions. When you give to missions, that's what you're giving to. And we want to talk about that today. We want to talk about money. Did you know that God speaks more about money than he does the issues of heaven and hell put together in the Bible? You know, the scripture has so much to say about money, and it's very important. The whole principle of this month and giving is, is to understand the principle of how to live our life is priorities. The priority is to give, to save, and to live on the rest. You heard your grandma say, you got to save for a rainy day. Give, save, and live on the rest. And Jesus talks a lot about, in Scripture, about being generous. And being generous isn't something that you have to be rich to do. Remember the woman that had just had one one gift, one small offering that she brought. It wasn't thousands of dollars. It wasn't a whole bunch, but it was one, two small mites, two things. She gave the smallest thing, 
And Jesus said she gave more than everybody because she gave, gave out of her need or her want. Now, you know we didn't take an offering earlier in the service because we're going to do it at the end. So if you have your checkbooks out and you're getting ready to write a check, just wait a minute. It might want to grow it a little bit. <laughs> now I sound like one of those TV preachers, don't I? Now, since Jesus fulfilled the law, does it mean we still give? Well, absolutely it does. Let me ask a big question for us here today. Do you worship your money or do you worship with your money? You know, starting out here at Abundant Life, uh, i never forget there was one night that I was called to McCord Air Force Base. That was back in the day when you could just drive on. And he just drove on and went to uh, one of the prisoners' houses, and there was a big fight in the home, and she had a gun actually pointed at him, and I had to stand between them. It wasn't a lovely place to be. And I said, you don't want to do this. You don't want to get this angry. This, this is, and it was all about money. It seems like money brings such stress to us. And I could understand that. I can understand it a lot. It wasn't that many years ago that, that we, it, you've heard my story, we had invested in this properties and we were going to develop them and we trusted a brother in the Lord who was a, a contractor and, and he went bankrupt. And because of that bankruptcy, we lost the property and we lost so much. All of everything that we ever had, we invested and we lost every nickel. Times are tough even today. Uh, 100 people a day in the state of Washington are still filing for bankruptcy. Did you know that? Las Vegas is still recovering from its bankruptcy only four years ago. People no longer have disposable incomes, houses. Then in Las Vegas, the housing prices have gone up some from the $400,000 range. We're down to 200000 People were not just upside down and underwater in their houses. They were really upside down and underwater in their houses. The Bible talks a lot about giving and why it's important for the believer because it puts the action back in God's court. You know, the Bible d tells us very cautiously that we're never to test God. We're never to challenge him in any way. But in one area, he says, go ahead and test me. And this one area is in our giving. Why is giving money important? We recognize, number one, that God is the real owner of everything. Tithing expresses our belief that everything on this earth comes from God and that he is responsible for all that we can earn or receive from the increase of it. Psalms 24.1 says this, uh, but Matthew 6.24, Jesus says, No one can serve two masters, either he will love the one and hate the other or will be devoted to the one and despise the, the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus puts it in perspective here that our worship is not of our money, it's worshiping with our money. Do you worship with it? Or do you worship your money? Every credit agency out there will loan you money, thousands of dollars, no matter your credit score, it seems like, these days. And it's not God's best for that disproportionate amount of your income to be designated to debt service. You know, really, the only debt, if you listen to Ramsey at all, should be your house. You know, I like the way the principles that he puts in place. And, and we all admire that. We say, yeah, I want to be like that. But I wonder if we would ever really take that challenge on, that the new status quo is no longer the BMW that sits in your driveway, but the paid-off mortgage. Come on, listen to me, young people and young couples. Don't go into debt for anything. You don't need that brand-new car, really. Save your money, because being in debt, the Bible tells it you are service to the lender. You are a bondage. If we want to be free from the bondage of money, giving our priorities with our money, getting that uh, priorities with money in line is very an important thing. And Jesus' followers, we're different in that we trust God with our money. And we're saying to God, God, this is something in your word that I'm going to believe you for, and you're going to put it into motion. I'm reminded of someone who didn't believe in God at all. He was an atheist, far from God. He was walking in the forest, and all of a sudden a bear comes chasing after him. He's running for his life, and the bear is scrambling behind him. Roar, I can hear him growling. And the man runs along the side of the hill. He's tried every trick he could think of. And finally, he stands up, and he raises his arms real big as though to scare the bear. It didn't even work. The bear just jumps right on him, pounces on him and is getting ready to devour him. The atheist, all of a sudden, something happens that has never happened before to him. Time freezes. The bear raises his paw and is frozen in midair as he begins to, as he's getting ready to swipe across the man to knock him cold so he can just eat him up. The atheist is laying there, all conscious and everything, and under the bear, unable to move, he says, God, God, 
God, I trust you. I will trust you now. I will trust you now if you'll just get this bear off of me, if you'll just stop this from happening. And God said, it's too late. That's not how this works. And you, you didn't really expect me to save you now. You've denied me all your life. You told people that I don't exist. You've mocked me many times. You can't expect me to make you a Christian just in this split second of a moment. And the atheist thought for a moment, he's staring at the bear and his teeth growling and its drool dripping and its paw raised in the air. He says, well, God, then save the bear. Make the bear a Christian. He says, okay. So time comes back into play, and all of a sudden the bear stops, puts its hands together, and says, Lord, thank you for this meal that I'm about to partake in. You know, the Bible says that generosity is also a spiritual gift. And I've noticed this, that there are some people, the Bible gives a list of spiritual gifts. Some are good at being lead in leadership, and others are good encouragers. But did you know generosity is among that list? And that there are those that I've noticed in this life that will give you literally the shirt off their back. And, and, and they just love to give. And, and some have this specific gift, the scripture says, that, that, is, that is there. And, and you look for ways to give. You look for opportunities to give. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit to help us let go of our love for money and turn our affection toward God and toward others. Giving your money, giving your tithe is a reflection of your spirituality. If you can't trust God with your money, how can you trust him with your spiritual gift of teaching or worship? How can you trust him with any of the other gifts that God has given to you? Did you know that Seattle is the least generous city in America? The poorest Christians give more dollars percentage-wise than rich people do. Poor people are more likely to see the needs of people that are struggling because they're closer to them. More than... One out of four American Protestants give no money at all. Now, that's sad, considering we are among the, those that give the most to benevolent needs in America, in, in all of America. Christianity Today quoted this um, by Christian Smith, an article called Passing the Plate. He said, not only do only 25% of Americans give away no money at all, only 10% of those faithfully tie to their church. I would say that it is probably pretty accurate, maybe perhaps at Abundant Life as well. I'm not going to complain one bit. God has really blessed Abundant Life, amen? We have so many things that, that God has done through us because we were willing to be givers, because we were willing to put that out there in the front. And, and for those of you, those of us, maybe we haven't been always as faithful as, as you wanted to be or you felt God's Holy Spirit convicting you to be. I want to tell you it's never too late to start. The good thing about God's grace is that it's, when we walk 10,000 steps away, it's only one step back because of his grace. You know, your money is very important. I realized this recently with the health issues that I, I faced. And, you know, I wound up in the hospital here not too long ago. And, and all of those things that were, that were crushing my body and making me feel so um, out of it and, and not with it, they were things to pay attention to because my health and the way that I was feeling was an indicator of a deeper problem. You know, if we see our finances suffering in a similar way, maybe there's a deeper problem. The problem is in our attitude toward giving. You know, God is the owner of everything, and he'll provide for all of your needs uh, if, he, if his ways are first. Not just giving your money, but by managing well everything. Did you know the Bible not only talks about giving, what you have to give, but it also talks about how to manage the 90%. And basically it's give, save, and live on the rest. Leave an inheritance for your children's children. That's a good principle to live by. It's a believer's expression of faith in God's provision. Number two, giving is a statement of our faith and worship to God. It's, it is for believers only. It is for believers only. If you are not a believer in Jesus, then this message is not for you. Just don't even listen. You don't even have to. It's not for you. You can enjoy what we're saying or whatever, uh, the funny parts you can laugh at. But if you're not a believer, then I want you to know that this idea of, of giving and the spiritual harvest that is received is not for you. But if you're a believer, this is something that is for you. We express our commitment to Jesus when we, when we say we're going to give this. Jesus says, in fact, in Matthew 6, 19, he says, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What do you really love? 
Who gets the best of your time? Who gets the best of your affections? And who gets the best of your money? Is it you? Are you so strapped in debt that you don't know if there's any way out? Maybe you need to come in and we need to talk. We need to, to write things out and really develop a solid plan and hold you accountable to a budget that you need to, that you need to nail down. These are all important things, friends, that the, God has given the family of God to do and to be a part of. I understand I, I have a business, and, and recently I went out on a limb, you know, to, to get a, a bigger contract with somebody. And, and uh, part of our uh, giving here at church is that we want to make uh, this grow, and we're helping it grow so that, that we can give back more of the salary the church has given us to invest in more ministry people here at the church. We, we want to see Abundant Life grow, amen? I'm looking forward to that Saturday night service. I realize this is a weekend where, but man, the last few weeks we've been packed out in this place. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what God's going to do. I mean, we should all turn around and wave at the balcony because it's going to be packed full real soon. It's not just going to be Gary and 12 others. It's going to be a bunch. So we're going to fill every one of these 200 seats at least twice, and we need to blow this building up and build another one. Praise God. Don't tell the insurance company I said that out loud. But really, if you know somebody, let me know. I am just kidding. Giving is a test of our continued obedience and trustworthiness to God and His Word. Giving is an expression of faithfulness to His Word, stewardship over our possessions. Philippians 4.19 says, My God will meet all your needs according to His riches and glory. Not just some of them, but all of them. Now, sometimes I step out into my wants. And sometimes I get in trouble because, I'm, you know, sometimes we get that way. We get tired of saying, God, you know that I want this really bad. I want, I want, I want it. And God keeps saying, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. Because the Bible says, I want you to save your money so that when you have extra, you can buy whatever your soul, quote, lusteth after. I believe in that, okay? I'm not a prude saying, oh, you know, we got to do this and this and this and this. I'm saying that there is a reward. we got to live like no one else now so later we can live like no one else, which means giving and saving and living on the rest. What well, makes us think that our money belongs to us anyway? It doesn't. Do you worship your money or do you worship with your money? The next one, it's a continual reminder of God's law of investment in return. Virtually everything the Lord does is based on these same divine principles. In Galatians 6, 7, the, the idea is the same. Pam and I were youth pastors in Winston, and, um, you know, I made $238 a month. A month. That was like, I just, just to be in ministry. That's why I was so, she got this job working at a physical therapy office, and so, you know, we didn't have any kids then. If you can imagine that. I mean, you've only known us with kids, but, but we had seven years. It was peace and quiet, man. It was just glorious. What happened? <laughs> My poor boys. What a gift from God. I know because I take them to job sites, and they're good workers, so I need them. Poor guys. So abused by their dad. <laughs> Having to work. Oh, man. That's awful, isn't it? That's terrible. <laughs> Those poor boys. We came to a point where we didn't have anything, and, and, and we're just looking at everything, and we're, you know, should we give? Uh, well, we can't. But there's no choice. We have to. Well, come to find out, that very next week, we were, we were so strapped, um, didn't know what to do. Um, I get an insurance refund check in the mail. Just showed up. It was like for 500 bucks. That's like two months' wage for a broke, starving-to-death youth pastor. I used to be skinnier. <laughs> well, then something else happened, and this guy in the church, he's going to build in a big addition on his house, and he needed somebody who could, who could do some framing. Well, you know what? I was kind of raised in that wheelhouse. I, I got off the bus at the job sites, wherever Dad was in town. That's how I grew up. I grew up cutting off rafter, ta rafter tails when I was 12 years old. So I had that in my wheelhouse. And so God kept putting things in front of us, and one thing after the other. And before we knew it, we had, we had enough to get by, not only but to give and to be a part of a great ministry. There's a few things about God's law of investment and return that are very crucial that we need to remember. Number one, God promises his blessing when we give. His word says it. If his word says it, take it to the bank. Luke 6.38, give and it will be given to you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In other words, it's not just going to be filled up. It's going to be pressed down. It's going to be compacted. It's going to be dense. It's like putting a bunch of money in a barrel. If you just throw it in loosely, nothing happened. You won't have as much as if you push it down. You get one of your kids, and you have them jump up and down on it for a while, and you put some more in, and it compacts. It says, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I got to tell you, this happens. The blessings of washing machines lasting longer, the blessings of things that are intangible that you, that you can't touch that all of a sudden happen and increases your financial outlook because your car's running longer. The amazing things that begin to happen, that, that's not just money pouring from the sky, but things in life that helps you be able to really give, save, and live on the rest. Number two, we can show our willingness to obey God's word for our life. Galatians 6, 7, don't be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows a please sinful nature will from the nature reap destruction. The one who sows a please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let's not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. I like the way the message puts this. Listen to this. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think this over and make up your own mind what you'll give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in, get in the giving. God can pour out the blessing in an astonishing way so that you're ready for anything and everything. More than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist puts it, he throws caution to the winds, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right ways uh, never run out, never wear out. This most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than, extra, more than extravagant enough with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Do you worship with your money, or do you worship your money? You know, when I look at these promises in Scripture, the Bible says, don't give because you're give, you're, somebody's twisting your arm to give. I mean, I've watched Sandy Struthers wanting to raise money for children that are dying in Africa from starvation. I'm sitting in front of the TV crying my eyes out. Oh, Sally Struthers, she can sure do her job. But I've seen others on there, that some Christian television shows especially, that, man, they twist your arm. The whole show is about... Is about do making a donation. I was, uh, Pam and I and the boys were on vacation last year and away from our church, so I went to another church. The whole service was about giving money. The, and maybe it was their once a year thing like I'm doing now. I don't know, but the whole thing was about you could give, you could give, reach down deep, dig those pennies out of your pockets, you can give. The baby needs a new pair of shoes, you know, type of thing. And I understand the urgency because we are in the times in which we live and, and the message of the gospel being preached is becoming a more and more rare thing. And we need that in the world. And we support our missionaries. We support our church. We support the preaching of God's word, which is the lost art today. And, and it's very important. This whole thing is about us and our relationship with God. Because I will tell you right now, Abundant Life and Larry Ellis don't need any of your money. We don't need any of your money. We don't want any of your money. What God wants is our obedience. And he established the church. He set it up so that we give to it. 1 Corinthians 9 tells us that you pay the pastor because he's the one preaching out of the money you give. The Bible tells us how to establish the budget for the church and what we should be paying and how we should be taking care of her and all of those things. All of those things are important. But don't get me wrong. It's not just about that. More so it's about you. Are you being blessed because you're giving? Do you see the principle in God's word, especially in the New Testament, where Jesus not only takes it, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 says, don't you remember what, it, what was said in the Old Testament as it pertains to giving? And he says basically in 1 Corinthians 9, it's the same right now. That this is for you. Letter E, the next one, it demonstrates our belief that God established the church to accomplish his purpose in the world. 
Malachi, that old Italian prophet, Malachi. Chapter 3, verse 10, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. That's awesome. What a promise of God's word. I hope that every one of you are praying that every day, that this, I realize, is the money that belongs to God. Some of you may be thinking, well, Larry and this church want this from me. Well, they want my money. Well, that's not the case. Even our fundraising for our carpet is outside of our regular budget and giving. When, when you write on the tithe envelope, giving to carpet, we understand that that's above your tithes and your offerings. That, that's all of us are giving. Pam and I, we're, we're going to be giving to that. We're all giving, and we're all part of that. We love our church. We don't like our 30-year-old carpet, so we're going to get rid of it. But it's not to stop the work of the ministry, the, the support of our missionaries, and the, the preaching of ministry of God's word, and every class that children are being taught this morning about the goodness of Jesus on their age level, appropriate. All of that is being supported because we give. All because we are doing our part in the kingdom of God. Where we spend our money not only can tell us our bills and debts, it also can tell us what we're worshiping. Look at every line item in your checkbook. It'll tell you what you worship, tell you where the best of your money goes. Now, there's the money that goes to our living expenses. It goes to our lights and power and our house payment to make sure that we have food, yes. But what else is being spent? Where is it going? People make inappropriate sacrifices to these things all the time. Our hobbies, our computers, our huge televisions, our sports, our food, our alcohol, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, our all World of Warcraft, whatever that it is. People make inappropriate sacrifices to these things all the time. We, we worship at the altar of these things with our pocketbooks, and that's the biggest part of our worship. Does the best of your worship go to God? Just watch people really hard when their favorite team loses. They sink into deep depression. I think we needed counseling after last Sunday's loss. The Seahawks lost. It's pretty much hopeless for every other fan in this room, but yeah, we don't know. Money is the one thing that really tells us where we put our priorities for life, for our time, our money, and our affections, the big three. Where is the best of your time? Where is the best of your worship? Where is the best of your money? What are you giving those things to? Over 80 times in the Gospels alone, Jesus talks about money. More than 800 times the Bible speaks specifically about money. Uh, Mark 19, 26, where your money is, there your heart is, as we read earlier. If you want to know what's really important to a person, you will see where they spend their money. What are the extras that you spend your money on? What does it look like? Is that thing more important to you than your tithe, than your giving to God? Because you're not giving to the church, you're giving to God. You're not giving to Larry, you're giving to God. My salary's set. In the church, you can see it. Anybody in this church can see the books of this church anytime they want. They are always open, right, Ada? All they have to do is call and come in, and she'll open up QuickBooks and, and show you every nickel that's spent. You'll get to see the slip that the usher signed every Sunday, all the way down to the two people that count it and put it in the bank. You'll be able to see every nickel and where it went. Now, try that somewhere else. If we say we love Jesus, we understand the purpose of our money. So what goes out from the storehouse of the Lord? Let's just look at this quickly. I don't want to belabor the issue but uh, number one we pay our pastor as we mentioned earlier first corinthians 9 13 those who work uh, for the temple get their food from the temple those who serve at the altar share what's offered associate assistant youth pastor missionaries electricity gas water sewer van expenses fuel marker pencils laser printer cartridges computer software projectors paint sprinklers trash music stands food benevolence gas allowance for our children's minister scholarship for kids camps women's men's retreats groceries for those in need rental assistance utility assistance website maintenance more views all the time literally around the world all the tools for teaching the word of God everything that we spend right there pretty much went over the whole budget of the church and there comes a time when you say well 
I go to church here. I got married here. Pastor buried my father and mother here, dedicated my babies here. I'm benefiting from what the Bible's being preached. I'm downloading sermons. I'm encouraged by the people. I guess it's time for me, baby, to stand up and be a part of giving. It is also responsibility of those leading the church to be pro- people worthy of giving to it. Are the people that are leading the church accountable? Do our lives reflect Jesus and our attitude and the things that we do outside of the church? Do we look the same outside as we do when we're walking down the aisle for prayer? Are the books open for scrutiny? What do you see today? If you evaluate the person and the leaders of the church and you see that, then that's important as well. I don't think we want to give to a ministry that's not reflecting Jesus, don't we? We want to give to one that is. How do we develop the habit of giving? Well, really quickly, let's look at these. Number one, we determine to give systematically. A great scripture for this. Each one of you should set aside a sum of the money. So give consistently. Give systematically. Number two, the second thing, to develop, to give proportionately. So you'll set aside a sum of money. The next scripture, is there scripture? A collection uh, on the first day of the week. Each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up. So when I come, no collection, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. So very much there's a structure here for giving. We do that the first day of the week. We make a collection, and we usually receive an offering, and that's what we do. And we set aside, the, and all of us set aside in keeping with our income, what, what, how much money did we make, and then we give that money. And that's, that's before, not after tax, and not just what you bring home, because that's also giving unwillingly sometimes, by giving to the IRS and the government. But we give on our total income. And then there's another one. We give proportionally. We give generously. Second Corinthians 9.10, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and brew bread for food will supply and increase your sto- store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way. So that you can be what? Generous. So the purpose of God giving us wealth is so that we can be generous. Grace is giving more than theoretical with the New Testament. Embraces the principle of tithing. The tithe is important, and I think I have this up here, don't I? The tithe is one-tenth. Maybe I don't. The The tithe is a tenth. Offerings are gifts given above and to advance the ministry. I don't think that's up there. And then alms are those given to those that have need. If you have all three of these together in the Old Testament fashion, actually you find that they gave between 25 and 35% of their income, not just 10%. When you look at a church like ours that, that gives so much to missions and stuff, it's amazing to see, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? How that this church, and I know not everybody's here this morning. It's it's New Year's Eve week, New Year's weekend, but... I I recognize that's a beautiful thing at Abundant Life. Praise God for that. We should be joyful that that's that. Not that we couldn't do more, but that we should be joyful that that is being done. Now, if you're a single mom and you have a fixed income and you have to get your car fixed and getting food on the table is a chore, then 25% is not grace giving. I believe in grace giving. I believe there comes a point, and, and I believe this is a biblical principle. There are those that literally have nothing, and they give by grace. This woman that gave the very small offering gave just a very little because that was, the all, that was all that she gave out of her need. That was grace giving. For the others, the idea that we're only required for 10% is not grace giving because we could give more. You say, well, it's only 10%. I'm going to pay it like I pay a bill. We don't approach giving that way. The tithe does belong to God. We should approach it somewhat like a bill, but still, it's giving. It belongs to God to give, to save, and live on the rest. Determine finally to give cheerfully. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, each man should give what he's decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under pressure. So I'm not going to pressure anybody to give. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to simply ask you the question, I know this is not in our Revelation series. It's not three points in a poem, and we're going to go home with warm fuzzies maybe. But one thing I do want to say, do you worship with your money or do you worship your money? Are you giving, saving, and living on the rest? Or are your life priorities messed up? Friends, i got to tell you, for those that are caught in debt, it's over your yin-yang. You don't know what to do. Trust God with what you have. 
Have you ever sat down with all of your bills in front of you and laid your hands on them and prayed? I got to tell you, God moves mountains in those situations. Trust God and don't be impatient with him. You know what he'll do? He'll just make the, 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 give, the blessing come later to teach us a lesson. Learn the lesson quicker. Right? Okay, God, I will trust you. I know this and this are coming. I tell you what, credit card companies can wait. They will call and they will bother you and they will pester you, and, but they can wait. They can do nothing to you. They will threaten to garnish, but they can't. They're not the law. They're not the, ta they're not the IRS. They're not the government. They can't do that. If they have to wait, they have to wait. Make sure you take care of your home. You got a roof, heat, and food. Take care of what you got to live. And we're going to do the Ramsey series again later this year, uh, the updated one. But I want to encourage you, you know, and ask you the question, are you worshiping with your money or are you worshiping your money? Is it a sore spot in your life because you're overburdened? If you are, now's the time for prayer. And we're going to pray for you and pray for God's deliverance and touch. So I'm going to ask our worship team to come as we sing this song themed that way. Lord, I need you. I need you. And as we do, we're going to pray for those that have needs financially. We're going to ask God to bring deliverance and provision. Friends, I know what it's like to be there. I know what it's like to be strapped. I know what it's like to be in want. I know what it's like to have enough. I know what it's like to be in those situations where you don't know what to do. You're not alone. And I have a feeling you're not alone just in this room. There are others who have been there and know the same song and have been down the same road. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, nothing, and that we have the privilege of approaching God's throne of grace with confidence that he'll hear our cries for help and answer according to our need. So ushers, would you come and bring your plates? And they're coming to receive that offering we've been talking about.